All right, uh, redoing a video I just did on the computer, a proper response video to Thunderfoot, but I uh, had my microphone settings set wrong, and the whole thing was ruined, blah, 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 so a waste of time. Anyway, it's on this uh, Viacom YouTube lawsuit. Uh, Thunderfoot did like a five-minute video, very low on content, very superficial argument. Um, you know, he's a scientist, you know. <laughs> it was just, uh, you know, horribly, it was just propaganda is what it was, uh, and uh, nonsense, gibberish crap. So the substance of his argument, I'm going to preface my comments by saying I am for liberalization of copyright law. No more of this, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, 90, 100, 400 million year copyright crap. I mean, it's bullshit. It, uh, you know, the stuff should get into the public domain. Should be a time limit. This stuff, owning stuff forever shit is bullshit. Uh, so anyway, um, that's not the argument here. So he's called them jerk, jerks and crooks. Uh, if I come jerks and, uh, YouTube crooks. So he's acknowledging they're crooks, and, but no, they should have won the lawsuit anyway. Because the crooks should win. Um, it's just a really idiotic argument. They, 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 the, 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 there's, the, there's two elements to the law. There's a thing called a safe haven. So the, the game was that they'll give the ISPs, the service providers, the platform providers, immunity for copyright violations in exchange for um, the fact that there would be a process in place where copyright holders could protect their uh, value with a DMCA. And so um, the ISPs really only had to maintain a system where that could take place and they'd be immune, uh, you know, in an expeditious manner, where copyright material. And the, only, and the only clause was that, no, they couldn't just take a blind eye to all theft. They couldn't just say, well, we just file a DMCA, it's not our problem. They had to take aggressive steps to reduce or eliminate violations they knew that take, were taking place. And knowledge of is pretty you know, if you admit you know somebody else owns it, it doesn't matter, um, you know, whether a formal DMCA has been filed under the law, because you've admitted you know it, you have knowledge of it. But anyway, and so the, the legal standard, a little tiny toad, but I don't think I can get him on video. Um, no, I'm not, oh, no, um, wrong place. Anyway, um, uh, so the, the, the terminology used in the law is a blind eye. So a company can't take a blind eye to repeated copyright violations. YouTube admitted that they knew that 80% of their content, the value, the views, which they were after, the only thing they wanted was views for videos so they could sell the company, um, was other people's material. Uh, and they, they didn't do anything to stop it. They, in fact, wanted to keep that engine rolling, and they just wanted to do whatever they could to reduce some idea of a legal liability, but they knew it was there. They knew it was wrong, um, and they just wanted to play it out until they could sell it and make their money and get the hell out of town. Because they knew the whole thing was built on uh, unsustainable violation of other people's uh, value. Um, you know, something other people owned. A reselling of stolen goods, essentially. Uh, anyway, so that's, you know, and so Thunderfoot's argument is, well, Viacom published their own material on YouTube, and therefore they're hypocrites or something. And uh, he totally ignores the fact, which is <laughs> Viacom, of course, would have an interest. I'm on YouTube. I hate Google. I hate YouTube. I'm on YouTube because it's to my advantage to be on YouTube. It has nothing to do with any affection for YouTube or the people who've stolen my content uh, or any passive acknowledgement that that's, uh, you know, okay. It's not, um, in my opinion. Uh, so anyway, so there, personal anecdote. But let's go with the real, you know, argument which is that Viacom published under their control. So what they did is, yeah, they put teasers on YouTube. Why wouldn't they do that? They had their company, they gotta, they gotta, they're in a competitive business. They've got to make their product known to people. And so, of course, they're going to market it. Of course, they're going to put trailers, put it on the lens, um, on YouTube. It's where people are, the eyeballs are, because of the valuable content that has been stolen. So, of course, it would be nice for them to even get on YouTube so they could actually label some of their own content so people would know whose content it is they've been watching. Uh, you know. Um, but, you know, not to, not to acknowledge understanding of the difference between a teaser and a full-length movie. You know, between a trailer, a movie trailer, and the actual movie. It's just, I shouldn't have to explain that to Thunderfoot. <laughs> but... That's the point. They don't care about the truth, obviously. And when, when it's these, these aggressive fighters for, for freedom who are really just aggressive, so stupid. It's Keystone t Cop kind of defenders of law and order here, defenders of freedom. 
because uh, you know they're just if if the Viacom decision, the YouTube decision, whatever you want to call it, if it's upheld in the appeals court, I predict that there'll be a new YouTube created. Uh, because YouTube can't really go there, um, and they'll just play the same trick. <laughs> they'll just allow a bunch of individual users to upload videos, and maybe they'll put a rational limit and only let it get a couple hundred thousand views each. But they'll just have different people keep uploading the same clip. And uh, they can just spread the liability, make it impossible for any copyright holder to prosecute these individuals. There's just no way to do it. Number one, they don't have any money. <laughs> okay, 77, you want to sue a 17 year old kid? Good luck. Um, and, uh, and number two, it's very expensive. And then the hurdle is you've got to prove and all this other stuff. So it's a corporation has no interest in going after individuals. It's terrible PR. It looks like hell if they actually win and get somebody punished. They look like goddamn evil all over the place. Uh, so yeah, it'd be, it'll be open season on any material that's in any form that's dealable. And uh, so if you're a small-scale artist, you'll have no incentive to put any content on the Internet because you'll have no control of it, you'll have no ownership or possession of it. Because the hurdle's going to be, you're going to have to spend ten grand at least to get into a court to attempt to protect your property, and maybe you might get a judgment for a couple of thousand against the guy who stole your stuff. And uh, it's just no way going to pay. You're going to lose money, uh, even if you had the money. Uh, so, yeah, all these freedom fighters are discouraging freedom. People will not have, people no longer have the freedom, to, the liberty to give anything because they can't control their gift anymore okay if they give a tiny bit they give 10 cents to one bum all of a sudden 5,000 zombie bums come steal everything they own and that's disgusting <laughs> it's grotesque that these assholes these intellectuals can't see that liability uh, you know this isn't about Viacom or Turner Broadcasting it's about artists and them having some control over their art and uh, this judge made a decision that basically just says steal it all. And uh, I don't see whose interest that's in. <laughs> you know, no, <laughs> change copyright, fix copyright law, but don't do it this way. Don't break it this way. Uh, because you're going to leave, uh, you know, the substance of the, uh, what's the right way to put this? <laughs> the substance of the harm is not going to be imposed on the evils that are out there. The substance of the harm will be, uh, you know, against the, the little guy who won't be able to uh, do what Mark Microsoft might be able to do or some other big corporation in terms of uh, teaching people a lesson. Small artists ain't going to be able to afford to do that. And like I said, I don't even know if Microsoft can afford to uh, start suing individual thieves. And uh, because, <laughs> you know, like I said, it just doesn't look good. Um, so whatever, this you know, very shallow, superficial uh, analysis of the lawsuit. No analysis of the judge's actual decision, where he tripped all over these terms. Um, you know, uh, safe haven and blind eye. Might as well just throw them in the garbage the way he um, <laughs> convoluted and perverted their meaning. Uh, and even Thunderfoot said it. I mean, he said stepping on their own heels or something. And you're like, well, isn't that a blind eye? I mean, if you're stepping on your own heels, I mean, it's, you know, I, I don't know, I guess maybe our language has got to get a little more explicit, but, uh, you know, uh, if you're not stopping it, if you're not making some effort, maybe that's the word, you, I don't know, what the standard, what my right standard would be, but clearly, there was, <laughs> the YouTube guys uh, had a deliberate frickin' plan to steal people's content indirectly through a user base uh, so they could get tons of views for a website so they could sell it for a profit a huge profit and that's all they did it's a damn racket uh, and a deliberate racket made out of deliberately made out of somebody else's value and it just can't that basic fact can't be denied and if anything you know the judge could have you know um, written some sort of uh, more more of a balanced decision and just said, look, uh, you know, the things have changed. We can make the DMCA process work. Uh, so no point in throwing the baby out with the bathwater for past crimes. Uh, but yeah, we'll give you the money set aside, uh, you know, for these violations and see where it goes from there. But I mean, it should have been something. I mean, to, to try to say what YouTube did wasn't against the law is crazy. What they're doing now is barely legal. 
and uh, I just don't see how it's possible to um, defend any. Uh, there's no there's no disincentive if this judge's decision stands uh, for somebody just to do the same thing all over again, just steal as much content from other people as possible, and uh, barely do nothing to prevent it, and thereby uh, make yourself a few billion bucks. <laughs> I mean, the blueprint has been shown. Uh, somebody else can do it, and they don't have YouTube's preposterous overhead anymore, so they can do it much more efficiently. And so, it's just a stupid decision by the judge. Can't, it can't have any. There's no practical way to implement his interpretation. Ouch! Of a blind eye. Fucking goddamn horse flies. Anyway, so that sounds like enough of a video. Horse flies, you get me. Uh, yeah. So till next time. And such. Yeah, it was a two-parter, and I was much more articulate the first time, of course. But whatever. <laughs> yeah. Till next time.